ProPen 3D comes in a small box, as you would expect. Inside you will find the same cigar shaped carry case as the ProPen 2, with the ProPen 3D sat comfortably inside. Just as before, you also have six extra nibs tucked away in the end, as well as the usual colourings so you can personalise your own pen. Setup is dead easy as the device you are using, in this instance I was using the Mobile Studio Pro 16, will recognise the pen as if it's always known it, welcoming it into the family, well that is if you have the latest drivers. When comparing the Pro Pen 3D with the Pro Pen 2 there are more subtle differences than the movement of the button. It's slightly shorter and slimmer too, plus heavier towards the lower half. These small changes do make it much more comfortable to use. I have switched between both pens and given the choice I would always use the Pro Pen 3D, it just feels better in your hand. The toggle switch has been made slightly smaller to make room for the new button which sits in front of it, closer to the tip. This makes it easier to access as you're working. Setting up the Pro Pen 3D is essentially the same as you would with any other Wacom pen. You open the pen settings via the Wacom Desktop Centre and here you can specify what each button does on a per application basis. There are a whole host of options available to you when choosing what each button does. As well as the basic mouse clicks, you can also specify a modifier, Alt, Control, Shift, etc, a keystroke combination, as well as setting them to open one of the many on-screen controls you can also create and use. Ok, so with all that out of the way, let's get down to the nitty gritty. What's the pen actually like to use? As mentioned previously, from a comfort perspective, it's certainly better to hold than the Pro Pen 2. However, the new configuration does take a while to get used to. I found that I kept accidentally pressing the new button when I didn't intend to. Because of the new placement, it's a lot easier to touch with my finger. I also found that I had to stretch a little to reach the third button, the one highest up the pen. It's not a natural movement for me, I found it much easier to access the lower buttons, so kept the upper button for less uh, immediate tasks. Do keep in mind however that we all hold our pens differently, so I might have smaller hands for example, or place my fingers differently, so you may find reaching the third button easier than me. As far as the pressure and the feeling of the pen as it moves across the screen, these are identical to the Pro Pen 2 and just as good. Just to recap, there are 8192 levels of sensitivity available to you, as well as full tilt control. One thing to note is compatibility. Unfortunately, the new pen will only work with newer devices. These are like the Mobile Studio Pro, Intuos Pro and the new Cintiq Pro line. It won't work on the Cintiq 27Q HD. As well as a general look at how the pen feels, I thought I would also record a summary of my experiences with some of today's top art applications. I'm still experimenting with the configuration in a lot of these, so the following comments are work in progress. I've been using Photoshop more and more with the Mobile Studio Pro, simply because I prefer it to painting on the Cintiq 27Q HD, so it made sense to begin here. I suspected the pen felt great, but I didn't feel the need to use the new button initially. I did configure it to be my Alt button, rather than using the Express keys, so I could access the eyedropper slightly faster. To be honest though, this is just how it was set up on the Pro Pen 2. I did consider using the buttons to help navigate my canvas, but with the touch controls it's easier and more intuitive to move it around yourself. To be fair, I wasn't expecting any major changes with Photoshop, as the Pro Pen 3D is more geared towards 3D applications, as the name suggests. Now onto 3D and what the pen was designed for, and I had a few ideas on how to configure the Pro Pen 3D with Maya to help speed up my workflow. By default the buttons are configured to emulate SolidWorks navigation controls, as they are most widely used. So, working your way from the tip, you have tumble, then pan and zoom, and right click. Now initially these didn't work for me. The zoom element was clunky and only worked when moving the pen vertically. I instead set them to middle click and right click, as I did with the Pro Pen 2. But the third higher button I now used to combine shift, control and right click to bring up one of the context sensitive marking menus. In this instance, it's easier to press this one button on the pen than try and press two express keys. I decided on this configuration because I'm already comfortable with working with Alt as an express key, so I can quickly toggle Alt and then use the buttons on the pen to navigate in a much easier way. To be honest, I'm still experimenting with the best option for the third button, but I'm finding that I am using it more and bringing it into my workflow. The problem with Maya is it's still a keyboard heavy application, so you won't be replacing it with the Pro Pen 3D. What it does give you is an additional convenient button to assign a common task to, which will save time in the long run. So on to ZBrush, and this is where I felt the Pro Pen 3D really came into its own. 
Previously, I had my pen set up with Alt and Space on the buttons, so I could navigate the scene, invert my stroke, and get quick access to brush sizes, etc., through the quick menu. With the Pro Pen 3D, I assigned the extra button to B to bring up the brushes panel, which actually saved me a lot of time. I know it seems silly as you could just move up to the brushes button, but there is a physical disconnect from what you're working on. You break concentration to find the button and then select a brush. I find moving it to the pen was less distracting and I could just keep focused on what I was working on. The last of the main applications I wanted to test, simply because I use it more now to texture my models than anything else, is Substance Painter. I thought this would be an ideal test for the pen as it's a combination of 3D and painting. Again, the default configuration wasn't working for me, so I adopted a similar one to Maya, being middle click and right click, but changing the third button to shift plus right click so I could adjust the lighting in the scene, something I do often to check the models and textures. So again, this did help to speed up my workflow, even in a small way. So should you invest? It's always difficult to recommend a device which is so personal to the user. Everyone needs their pen to work in a different way and to be configured how they want it. So what's good for one artist may not be for another. I was initially skeptical about the Pro Pen 3D. I already used the express keys to access most of my tasks, so I didn't feel like I needed an extra button to help me navigate in 3D. However, what I discovered was a device I didn't realize I needed until I had one. It's a device you must invest in, not just with money, but with time. It's so much more comfortable to hold than the Pro Pen 2, but when you first use it, you may not like it. You need to give it time to grow on you, to settle into your workflow and become part of the routine. You also need to experiment a great deal with the ideal configuration for you. So should you upgrade? Well, I would say if you're a 2D artist, then maybe not. Well, not unless you want that extra comfort and feel the need for an extra button. But what if you're a 3D artist? Well, this is a tough one because £90 is a lot to spend if you're already happy with the Pro Pen 2. What I would say is if you primarily work with a device like the Mobile Studio Pro and you're a heavy ZBrush user, then I think it's an upgrade you should invest in. Initially, it won't feel like it's worth the expense, but gradually, over time, you could find it becomes an essential part of your toolset. <laughs>